Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Early last month, Luna 25 unfortunately failed in its attempt to soft land on the moon. The soft part being the part that it failed at because it definitely hit the moon, going at about 1.5 kilometers per second. Now the Russian engineers have a pretty good idea about what exactly went wrong and we have a posting on Roscosmos's Telegram channel which uh, summarizes it for the general public. So I want to explain how I understand this. I don't read Russian to be clear, but people who do, such as Russian Space Web, have uh, confirmed that the translation that I'm getting out of Google is roughly consistent with uh, what I understand. So. Luna 25 was Russia's first attempt to land on the moon, and it's named Luna 25 to draw a link to the old Soviet program, which had many successes and many, many more failures. But uh, importantly, that was made as the Soviet Union, and many of the states that now made up the Soviet Union are now separate countries, such as Ukraine. Now, while many of the old bits of Soviet technology, such as the engines, are well understood, the control system was entirely new. They had big problems with a mission called Phobos Grunt, and after that, they decided to start with a clean sheet and design a new computer and associated control systems called the BKU. Now, one of the modern innovations in vehicle control hardware is the common spacecraft bus. That is a communications channel that can be shared by multiple pieces of hardware. If you look at Apollo hardware, for example, you needed individual cabling for every single device. Whereas if you have a common bus, it's much simpler to hang everything off of that and then have them negotiate access to it. Just like computers do, they talk over Ethernet and they split up the time using the connection so that they each get a chance to talk. So for example, you've got the computer, you've got the star sensors, the accelerometers, the inertial measurement unit, the communications and the engines probably all hanging off of this for communications. And because you've got all these pieces of hardware, they need to be sure that they can absolutely talk when it is important. So these communication systems include messaging priority. So the high priority messages say turn on the engine will supersede, say, a lower priority uh, message, such as, um, you know, hi, mom. And it appears that there was a software error that meant that the signal to turn on the accelerometer, right, the BIUS inertial guidance system, was set to a lower priority than it would otherwise be. So at the point where they're preparing to burn their engine, there's a lot of things that need to be activated. And so there's a lot of high priority operations, a lot of saturation, a lot of signals on the bus. And the signal to turn on the inertial guidance unit was effectively not delivered. And so the guidance system didn't start up and it wasn't measuring the acceleration of the vehicle. So while the engine is burning, it was getting signals telling it that the velocity had changed by zero meters per second. And so the computer keeps burning the engine, hoping to see that delta V change come up towards the value it's expecting. It runs over its 84 second burn time and it gets up to 127 seconds and that's when the engine shuts down. And that is presumably some kind of backup timer. As a computer nerd, uh, I can't help but notice that 127 is the highest uh, number that can be stored in seven bits but there's very likely some other logic involved with those timeouts. Now, they had had a few previous issues during the cruise to the moon where they had seen the inertial guidance system not activating correctly or the backup system activating, uh, and there was some concern that they should perhaps delay the landing. The problem was that once they committed to the landing and once they ran over, they had a very short amount of time to recognize that they were on a collision course and fix it. In deep space, they were a long way from the moon, but once they were close to the moon, they had less than an hour before the orbit carried the spacecraft down low across the surface until it hit a mountain sticking up. And so this is very much a software error. And it's the fourth spacecraft to crash on the moon in the last five years due to a software error. There are multiple NASA spacecraft, part of the commercial lunar uh, payload services program, which are going to be headed to the moon. And I really hope that they check their software a whole lot better. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>